I think um, this is something, uh, a, a kind of question that is very important right now. And because one, number one, the social media platform is very, very uh, popular right now. And we have so many different types of social media platform. So from Facebook to Instagram, to the Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and et cetera. So it, it definitely have actually linked to mental health issues. So, and the thing is that it caused a lot of issue related to the sleep uh, deprivation. For example, um, people who uses a uh, social media platform in a way that is uh, overwhelmingly, they actually can cause issues such as not enough sleep, that can actually lead to depressive, uh, depressive mood, uh, that can cause anxiety, and also there's many other issues related to all these mental health issues. The, the problem now we have is uh, social media platform appears really harmless because I think most of us have some at least one social media like Facebook or Instagram. It, it definitely appear very harmless. It's just a social media. How what what kind of danger can it be? You know, it is not cigarettes, it is not drugs. And so we actually allow people to use it. But what we did not realize is the social media has something we call as a reinforcing nature. So when we use it, when we open up the Facebook, when we look at the Instagram, it activates our our brain reward center by releasing dopamine. So what is this dopamine? This dopamine is also, people call it as a few group chemical. So linked to pleasurable activities such as uh, chocolate, such as a uh, movie, such as a uh, uh, friendship. So we, we make us feel happy. So when we look at the social media like Instagram and when you post a picture and then you found there are like 1000 likes there, you got to, oh my God, this is so exciting. Yeah, the kind of thing. So this is something called reward center. So that's why you, you need to understand the social media platform is being designed to be addictive. And because it's been addictive and therefore it is associated with anxiety, depression, and even physical ailment. But the question now is why? How could something so harmless in appearance become so addictive? Because the thing is that the outcome from the social media is not predictable. So for example, I don't know if I post a picture on Instagram, I don't know how many likes I'm going to get. So who will like my picture and who will say something good about my picture? Like, oh, wow, you look good today. Oh, the food looks so delicious. So I don't know. Because of this unknown outcome and the possibility of a very desirable outcome and make us keep on engaged with the site. So every single moment I'll check Instagram. Oh, there's how many people have seen my picture? And then I will check uh, on the if Facebook, how many people have uh, actually said good things about my post? Because this is so unpredictable. And then the worst thing is that from time to time, there may be some you know uh, people who mention good thing about my picture. And this is exactly the same as gambling. Because I go to casino, for example, for example, casino, and I know that, you know, I don't know when will I win the money. But sometimes I get money by playing the games. But sometimes I don't because but there's a potential future reward and therefore I keep on going there. So that's why it is very addictive. And not only that, it actually increased my self-esteem by looking at, oh my God, I have so many likes today and feel belonging. And people tend to have this uh, content that, oh, I have received very good positive feedback. And then this that's why I keep on checking my social media and see how, how many, if I don't have enough likes, I feel disappointed. So I think, oh gosh, the, why people don't like me? So that's why we eventually we get meditation from the internet to, to serve as a replacement for a very meaningful connection. So now we, we don't we don't expect validation from a real person, a real friends of our family. We look at how many likes I get from my social media platform. And if I don't get enough, I don't feel oh, I don't feel good. And 
And some more, if I compare with other people, oh, like, no, I have another friend on social media. Oh, he has 1,500 likes. I got 500 only. Oh, I'm not happy because he got more than me. So I start comparing other people. So this is why with this kind of unhealthy comparison, it causes much more mental health issue. Of course, the last thing also, not forgetting about this uh, phenomenon called the fear of missing out. So I think some people use the uh, acronym as a FOMO, and it does play a role. So imagine that everybody is using social media site, especially among younger people. They will say, oh, are you on Instagram? I say, no. And then they say, oh, uh, we had the party recently, and we post on Instagram. And then uh, we invite people while the Instagram, oh, you felt left out. And then this sense of being isolated and may later create anxiety and depression and they felt that they've been excluded from social circle so this will affect their thought and, and feeling and one more thing is that you know i think most of us at this issue is that uh, we go to bedroom with our phone and then we have the social media in our hand and we're supposed to go to sleep but you know like, oh okay, how's instagram today how's the facebook today and then without us knowing three hours has gone and then this causes a lot of problem with the sleep. When we don't have enough sleep, we have a higher risk of getting depression. We have uh, uh, more problem with attention. We have more problem with focusing with our job. And then it will cause physical health problem. And so these are the areas that actually cause a lot of issue with uh, mental health. Parents, I think, I mean, of course, for the children, I think the parents is very important. I think, number one, the, the parents themselves have to set a good example, you know, and you'd be, I, I think you know very well that that the many parents is also addicted to social media platform. So, and the father, mother spend all the time uh, looking through their Facebook and Instagram. And then at the same time, you, they, they can't be scolding the children. For, oh, no, you're not supposed to spend time on the Instagram while they themselves are doing that. And, and as you said earlier, uh, you know, uh, people bring their food into the, the, the toilet or people bring their food into their bedroom and then spend time scroll, scrolling through what are the things. So number one is that as a parents, we have to set an example. So we ourselves have to have our own, uh, we are frequency, how frequent we are using the social media platform. If we want our children to learn, we have to set the example. So number one, but otherwise, I thought the children will listen. Now, these children, they will not just accept the instruction just like that. They will say back to the parents, say, oh, you say I cannot use it, but you are the one that's holding the phone right now. And you are the one that I know more active on Instagram than me. So I don't know how the parents are going to answer that. So that's a why. Number two, if the parents are able to, to, to make sure that themselves also using the social media platform in a healthy way, then they can start to develop a plan uh, how much time the family members should spend on those devices. So this will be include strategies on how to teach the children what is the healthy way of using the social media and also the, the healthy or uh, hygienic way of sleep. So what, for example, um, because nowadays you know that you know Instagram, Snapchat, uh, TikTok is really the, the 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 teenage things. Facebook, I was told that more of the elderly thing nowadays. So so I think that means that in their teens, in their in the uh in their uh primary school, they probably already start using the social media platform. So we to start from there. So one thing is that the parents had to set boundary. Like okay, you are allowed to use the the social media, or you have to you have to turn in their phone at night, and with the understanding that the parents can review what did they post and the messages. So I think this is important because especially we do not want our children to fall into the trap of a pedophile, 
uh, not being actually used by other people. Sometimes the children may not aware that they post pictures that is can be used in an illegal manner. So therefore, number one, the parents have to set boundary and uh, rules and regulation. One is uh, where you have to return the phone to the parents at night, at what time, and then have to allow the parents to review what you said. So this helps the parents to be in the nose. Then you don't so you will not feel so worried you now that your children may be in danger, for example. And you might be surprised some young children that will post online that they're gonna commit suicide before they tell the parents. So this is something that we need to know. I think you also know that a lot of people uh, in the past they actually post the suicidal idea on Facebook before the parents actually know. And actually it's Facebook user who found out and start calling the police and start looking for this person. So this is why it is important for the parents to be able to gain access. And then also it is important to monitor and also inform the teenagers to remember that everything they share online is always a permanent fingerprint. You can delete it, yes, but it is not going to disappear from the uh, digital fingerprint. So if they don't anything that they don't want their parents to see, then it should not be posted. So this is important. So and then in the same also I think another thing you must understand uh too is good that I think uh the if possible for children, uh no selfie would be a good idea because the thing is that you know society nowadays are, are not as safe as before and then we do not want children to post their own picture it's dangerous and then also no picture of where do they stay for example so these are the things that you know they can actually do that they, they can still share the experience that they can share the food they can share the the scenery so they can share the experience with their friends without focusing on how they look like or where do they live. So this is important. So the thing is, that, uh, this is why it's important that we have to have a really good discussion with the children. And then they always find, that the children may say that, oh, without this uh, social media, I cannot find friends. Uh, people will not like me anymore. So I think it is important that, that the, for the parents that the, the, that, if the friend is good friend to your to our children, they'll find a way to spend time with them. So without social media does not mean there won't be any friends. If the friends that only want to be friends with you because of social media, I'm not sure whether this is a good friend that we should keep at all. If the good friend they'll come to your house, they spend time with you, they share your feeling. So these are the good friends that we need to keep. So that's why they have to understand that uh by not using the social media that frequent, this is much better. So if let's say they want to know what are the, the friends, whether they got any plan or imitation, honestly, the best way to take up the phone and call the friends, talk to the friends. I think that is a much better than, you know, than just uh, look at the social media. So this is important. My suggestion is the best is to put uh, 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 whenever you feel like something's not right, go and see a doctor. Because I think we it is more important to 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 be on the earth of over detecting than not detecting. Because in our society right now, over detecting mental health is not a problem. It's not the challenge that we have. Our challenge now is that we don't detect them, and we only realize after things has happened. Like for example, we only realize that our teenagers are having mental health problems when they attempted suicide. But we, but we only realize afterwards. So it is not a very optimal way of helping them. So my recommendation is that uh, whenever anyone felt that they are not like before, but it, they may not actually realize what is wrong, but they just know that something is wrong, at that moment, look for a doctor. It can be any doctor, it can be a psychologist as well, it can be a counsellor, it could be a school counsellor, it could be a school teacher, it could be mother, father, it doesn't matter. 
and then so just say that you just talk to the person and then and that would be the time to seek help seek help doesn't mean that you must see a psychiatrist no it not, doesn't mean that because that would be too 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 narrow in that sense so seek help means that you speak to anyone that can help you so in my opinion there are parents teacher counselor uh, even uh, the ustas uh, the priest anyone that you know uh, able to help you speak out i think most important is speak out do not do not hide it inside your heart and then or, or do not just post on a Facebook or Instagram, speak out. So it is okay that we realize that, oh, this is just a, a temporary uh, anxiety and nothing serious is going to happen, for example. It's okay because I, I'm fine with them finding, finding out that it is okay. But at least we are not going to miss anyone that actually have a uh, critical situation. So that's why the recommendation is speak out. On, on the other hand, uh, for parents and teacher, I think a lot of times, you know, uh, uh, teenagers, they don't talk so much, that it is a high inside their heart. So, but you'd be surprised, teacher can see actually, teacher, because of their experience as a teacher, they would oh, this boy or this girl, Look, today a bit different. Something is wrong with this boy. It could be some sort of uh, the behavior have changed a little bit. Uh, it's not as joyous as before. Not so much talkative than like before. Be quiet. So these kind of things uh, do not just pro you know just brush it through. So these kind of things is important. This can be the early early sign of a severe mental disorder or severe mental health issue. So for teachers, for parents, and for auntie, uncle, for example, that when you find that this boy or this girl, something is not very okay, or your friends or your your family members, it's not very okay, don't wait. Uh, first thing to do is talk to that person. Talk to that person, and then that's the most important thing. Listen to that person, and then a lot of times issue can be resolved by that. If not, at least you can help that person to to get further help. I think the the main advice is that um, you know, as any human being, even including me, um, I think we we have the control. We we can decide. I think as what you mentioned in the earlier time, earlier part of this interview, we choose what, what to do with our life. So we choose how much time we want to spend on the social media platform. We choose social media platform did not force us to look at it. So because of that, we should not blame social media for what we are suffering. We can choose because we can choose. Therefore we are able to decide what is meaningful for our life. So is, is spending so much time on the social media platform a meaningful things to do in our life? If it's yes, of course, I will not stop anyone from doing it. But if it's no, that means that we can choose to limit and we can control what we want to do with the social media platform and therefore we can choose what kind of uh, mental health that we want. So if we find that this activity, uh, social media or internet or television or, or any, uh, any other behavior or activity that becoming the eating into our life and drag us away from a meaningful life, that means for example, spending quality time with our family, uh, exercising, uh, do our work in an efficient way. That means that this activity and how we are doing it right now is dragging us away from a meaningful life. Then we have to do something about it. That includes maybe we limit the time spending on it. Yes, I know that nobody like it. Nobody will like it. You know, you tell them don't spend so much time on social media. But if it's for the sake of our mental health, I would say that it's worth it. It is not exciting 
yes, but it's worth it. So because it's worth this for our mental health, therefore, no matter how painful for not spending long time on, on Instagram, I think it's worth it. So this is why we need to be clear. What do we want in our life? Is this thing, is this activity is going to give me a meaningful life? Is this thing going to give me a true friendships? At the same time, we need to teach our next generation and even ourselves is that what we are looking at the social media platform is never the real picture. It's always a chosen picture that want us to see. Uh, we should not drag into it by believing this fantasy. It is fun, but I think full stop is after fun. Do not put too much emphasis on it. Mental health problem is not a rare thing. Mental illness is not rare and it's happening a lot right now to our teenagers, to our to ourselves, to our family members. So I think what we can help them is by detecting them early and spend time talking with them, listening uh, to them, just be with them. And then if we ourselves feel that you know, this is not enough, then it is also recommended that we bring them to seek help. And it doesn't have to be psychiatrist. It can be a psychologist. It can be a counselor. So it doesn't matter because all these people in the mental health professionals will be able to help them.